You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. My name is Christian Duvall, and this is the Christian Business Podcast. I'm super excited to have my good friend, Daryl Crawford Marshall, with us from Adelaide, Australia. Thank you for being here, Daryl. So good to be with you again. Awesome. Awesome. So we were able to um, hang out in Adelaide when I was in Australia a few uh, months back, and um, it was an awesome time. And I thought Daryl will be an awesome person to have on the Christian Business Podcast because of his experience with prophetic business coaching. And so that's something that may be new to people. That's something that you may have heard of, but don't know a lot about. And we're just going to really dive into that topic today. So thank you for, um, you know, sharing what you know with our audience. A pleasure. A pleasure. So awesome. Good. So let's just jump right into it. How yeah. about you get started? Our audience, most of our audience knows you because you've done a number of podcasts with my husband, Daniel, and you have a lot of amazing things to say. I really enjoy your podcast. But mm -hmm. now that we're talking about this from a business perspective, I'd love to, for you to have an opportunity, just kind of give a, a background about your ministry, how you got into yeah. the prophetic and how that yeah. transitioned into uh, doing prophecy for businesses. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. I think I mentioned a tiny bit on Dan's podcast, but I'll go over that. I'll just go over it briefly again, just for a couple of minutes. So some of the audience might not have heard, but um, I've been in prophetic ministry for a number of years. Um, I've been in ministry for about 17 years, but in prophetic ministry um, for maybe, maybe a decade and maybe a tiny bit less. And I was prophesying over individuals and I had a real heart to, see people prosper and everything and you know on the occasion i would give someone a prophetic word that was would pertain to perhaps a business or, or that they were moving into or something like that not specifically being a prophesying into businesses but just prophesying over the general body and then if some if the if there was a if there was something that pertained to business i would just kind of process that and i did you know i was prophesying for a long time and then i started to do some itinerant stuff um, in Australia and, and other places as well. And then what happened is that one day I was in a conference and a prophetic guy who was associated with Vacaville Church called Dan McCullum prophesied over me um, while I was in a conference. And he said to me, he was he started out the uh, Supernatural School, I think with Chris Vallotton and Bethel. And he said to me, God is gonna make you a prophet into the business world and government. and I didn't in any way want to be a prophet into the business world or government. First of all, I found business extremely boring and, and I'm just being real. I, I, I didn't want anything to do with business. My mum was, my mum was an entrepreneur before she passed and she was very into property and, you know, and that's what she did. And I, uh, so I had mega, uh, dis, uh, mega negative associations with business. I wasn't into it at all. And so, I liked money, but I didn't. And I didn't love money, but I, 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 I liked. I liked um, to. I liked to produce wealth, but I just didn't have a, a a desire to connect and partner with people in business. So what happened was that day. I don't know if I've shared this specific story, but this is exactly what happened. So I left that conference on a lunch break after he had given me this prophetic word, and I stood in a line in um, a cafe. So I'm waiting to get a coffee. For the um, so it's the lunch break. I'm standing in the line. I'm about to get a coffee, Christian. And this is so crazy. The guy in front of me. I'm just standing. There's a guy in front of me. Looks like South American guy. And as I'm looking at him, I see something come out of heaven. And it's like at the bottom of a blueprint map, but it had little positions on it, nearly like a chessboard. And I watched in the spirit, as you know, I'm prophetic and I can see things. I'm quite a strong seer. And I saw it come out and I saw it land on his head. And I was like, what on earth is this? And the Lord spoke to me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Daryl, this man is a businessman. This is this restructuring that he needs to do. I want you to pull him aside and tell him that the restructuring that's happening for his business is going to look like what you can see on the chessboard. So then I saw, looked on the chessboard and I saw male, males and females on the chessboard. And I saw the repositioning of all these different people. So I said, okay, sure. Um, so I got my coffee, he was waiting for his coffee and we ended up, I ended up walking over to him and I said, excuse me, this is going to sound very, very strange, but 
are you you're in business aren't you and he said yes i am and i said can i talk to you for a moment about the repositioning of some of the people in your business or well, he's he he's flipping out like he went turned white started to think that you know he said who are you how do you know this and i basically gave him the next plan for the business and what needed to happen in the space of about three or four minutes i said that i would start to talk about the people that he had currently working with him what gender they were where that what position he needed to move them into and he just started to flip out like he was just like i can't believe this can you can my wife meet you she likes um basically she goes to psychics are you a psychic can we meet you here's my card let's spend some time together and i didn't ever follow up on that i didn't want to go any further because i was I just didn't. And I just said, no, just take the information that I've given you. And I really believe that if you implement that, that's going to, you know, and this is many years ago. So we're talking about a number of years ago. And so I walked out and I was like, that is a very, very strange experience. And I went and spoke to this guy, Dan McCullum, and he said, I want you to tell the whole conference that. And I said, why? And he said, because you just got activated into being a prophet into the business world. This is the same day. So this is only an hour after he gave me the word. And so I'm like, okay, so I remember just still being extremely reluctant. But then what started to happen, obviously, is I started to come alongside people. And as I came alongside people, I would start to be able to see specifically things that they needed to perhaps alter in business. Sometimes I would have a prophetic word that they would need to shut a business down. Sometimes I'd be in a place where I would be able to speak about maybe some kind of expansion they were going to have in the business. And none of it, I did. The, the beauty of this whole thing was I never had to try for it. I never had to really look for it. I never had to pray for it. It was really when I was beside them, it was a supernatural empowerment to talk to them about the business stuff. And so that started to happen with the government as well and started to speak up speaking to governments. So what, so really it was a supernatural kind of moving into something, but I started to see Christian something really interesting. I started to see, that the marriage of the things of the prophetic, or let's just say this, the per things of the prophetic married perfectly into the things of the business world. Because mm -hmm. I started to see that business people really wanted to know what to do and realized obviously that many over the years, extremely wealthy people had gone to clairvoyance, psychics, employed them permanently on their permanent staff. It was a standard thing. And I started to learn that that was for the highest people you know, not just the millionaires, but the billionaires, that that's actually one of the modalities of working that they would use was a supernatural plugging in, as it were, in order to choose it to help direct them. And I realized then that 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 uh, everybody is looking for help and assistance, especially business people. And so then I really felt that the Lord had said to me, look, I need you or I've actually called you to come alongside businesses. So I would start by just going alongside, you know, pizza shops or whatever, just a business. And I would sometimes just offer my service and I did it for, you know, I just did it for free. I just said, look, let me just come alongside. Let me pray for your business. And then what would happen is the businesses would start to get out of debt and they would start to prosper because what we were doing is getting the word of the Lord and helping redirect them as to what God was saying rather than just what they would thought was a good idea. Because I realized that in business and I, I'm not, I was never a business person per se, but I realized well, after working with so many business people that business people have a lot of the time really good ideas, but they're not God ideas. So they so they're always running with a good idea. And I, I, lit, I started to get to a place after a couple of years where I was tired of business people telling me all their good ideas. Because mm. then I would say, did God say it? You know, we're talking about Christian business people now. So I'm talking about, I, I, jumped, I jumped ahead a tiny bit, but the Lord spoke to me specifically and he said, I want you to first 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 minister to christian businesses because these are the ones that i want to prosper primarily in order that my kingdom would advance through the through the desire they have to to sow into the kingdom so so these were the so so as i said to you i got uh, entrepreneurs get and most of them were entrepreneurs or carried that spirit of entrepreneurial entrepreneurialism and they are full of ideas and they would spend half our session just telling me all these good ideas. And I'd be like, okay, what's God saying? You know, and they'd be like, well, let's, let's talk about that. And that was one of the things I ended up doing, coming alongside them and helping them ascertain uh, the word of the Lord for the business in that season and what to do. So I love this because there's so many things you said in here that I don't know if uh, the, the, the audience really caught on, but I'm going to unpack a little bit of it right now because I think it's really important. So the first thing you said, this is actually one of the goals of this series of podcasts, 
is, and it's actually one of the goals of my kingdom business class, which is to make clear and put a fine point on the idea that the business world and the spirit world has always been, there's always been an interfacing with that. And um, one of the big mistakes that I made for a lot of my career when I was in corporate America was not understanding that. I thought I was a Christian over here. My name's Christian. That's all you need to know. And then my business is over here and I'm in corporate America and I can, you know, I'm going to not do things that look like the world, but I'm going to conform in a context of I'm going to stay a professional in this way. And I didn't understand that God had actually meant, desired, and has a keen interest on business and directing and having his way in that context. So there's two things. Number one is that means that God has prophetic words for non-believers. God has a destiny for non-believers businesses. And I want to let you go on that in a second, but I want to bring up this other point that you made that I think people, if you caught it, you really need to hear this. And that is uh, Fortune 500s, million dollar companies, billion dollar companies, they are interfacing the spiritual world on top of their decision-making. They not only are, you know, understand that it's real, but as you said, they're actually putting money behind getting access to superior wisdom, clairvoyance, or um, an edge, not just based on their business principles and their strategies and everything you read about in books, everything you read about, you, you read about in business school, but they're actually integrating the spirit world into the businesses. And that's one of the things that I really want people to understand is when you're bringing a superior kingdom revelation that is from the Lord into your business, that puts you in a place where you can compete because they're pulling from oftentimes a superior wisdom. Yeah, it is actually happening. Yeah, and you just kind of threw that out there. That's what they're doing. That's behind the scenes. That's a dirty secret. Nobody wants you to know. And they want to give you a rule book that's like the you know 17 steps of business and tell you that's how they got there. And that's 100% now they got there. It's a much more complicated spiritual story. But because they want to strip that off for us, because that's where their real source of power is, they want to strip that back for us and say, just follow this, this book, leave your Christianity to the side. We're often left in a place where we're really not able to manifest the businesses that God really has for us. So thank you for bringing that point out. I thought it was really cool. So I just want to now take you there. Let's talk about God's plans for unbelievers and how you're mm-hmm. actually prophesying to all sorts of businesses that mm-hmm. um, would, you know, really slaughter a lot of sacred cows. Can you just talk a little bit about, about that and, and your understanding yeah. about? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, I think that first of all, it's the same as, see, God, God loves people. I know that sounds very basic, <laughs> but he really does, you know, and he loves believers, but he also loves very much unbelievers in fact he sent jesus for the unbelievers and we were once you know once in that category or or, or, yeah and so so with regards to what what happened was when i started to prophesy i started to prophesy as i said to you god spoke to me and he said i want you to prophesy into um uh believe with prophesy to believers companies or christian companies and then um on occasion because i was actually ministering to a lot of business people and then on occasion, there would be the odd business that he would say to me, actually, you can come alongside this business and you can help them. And it started with a fitness club. And I would just go in and I would talk to them about their direction in the, business, in, 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 um, the fitness industry. But what happened was specifically that I started to get words of knowledge. Now, what's really interesting is that it talks about words of knowledge. It actually talks, talks about the gift of prophecy being a gift for unbelievers in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 25, I think, talking about, you know, if the secrets of men's hearts are revealed, then they fall down and say, surely God is among you. And what started to happen is I started to see that there was a twofold thing that first of all, God was using uh, my interaction with the bus- uh, non-Christian businesses to um, bring them to a place where they could actually, first of all, meet him. That he was actually using it as an evangelism tool as a, a tool of reconciliation to be able to so that it, to be able to manifest himself to them through uh, the things of the supernatural through a believer so i mean the same as when we go out on the street and pray for someone's need you know one to one is given this gift and to another that you know there's some 
or even even specific calling. So I started to see that it was actually a bit of a soul winning tool, but the the way that it was it was a very slow and steady wins the race reality. So it was having to meet on a weekly basis, sometimes a fortnightly basis, give them some kind of prophetic insight that would normally blow their mind, um, and them coming into a place going, "How do you know this stuff? How do you know?" It? And I said, "Well, you you know you know I'm a Christian." So that would be the first. But the second would be that there was this prospering then of the businesses. And this is very controversial now, what we're about to say. So, so, and I know you don't mind controversial, but it is what it is. What happens then? Businesses start to prosper, but what happens then? Where does the money go? Well, these people are non-believers. So what does that mean? Does it mean that they sow into the kingdom? Well, apart from paying me and paying me a fee, which wasn't very high at that time. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not talking about a lot of money. So what happens to all of the rest of the money that God, well, unbelievers do things that unbelievers do and invest in things that Christians wouldn't invest in. Yeah. And they might, you know, they might decide, hey, I'd really like to give into the Mardi Gras this year. So I'm going to give twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 into a Mardi Gras float. Well, obviously that's not something that God is prospering. So this, I find this really, really interesting. And then what I started to see was this. I started to see that for God, he doesn't look at specific instances as to what people do in their decisions, but what he does, this is, and this is very important. And I think it's really, and I won't talk for ages on this, but this is really important, but God is all about life direction because what he's doing is he's, he's gradually shifting people onto the right track. And what I started to see was that as I started to build relationship and prophesy into these business, you probably want to talk about the prospering of businesses in a different way but first of all i just want to say this that what happens is that gradually over the time i would find that i became the light to these businesses and what would happen is that even when i wasn't advising them they would be consistently checking my facebook commenting on the prophetic words that i was releasing commenting on the things of the kingdom being very encouraging connecting with other people and what had happened was that it's sown and some incredible seeds in their world that had actually when push came to shove and when things started to shake that we became or i became even as a business person i actually became their pastor mm. i became a pastor of people that were never ever going to go to church or let's just say this at in that season we never um, that was not a lack of faith statement but really had no interest in going to church had no desire but i became i literally started to shepherd the lost through being a prophetic business coach and I, my language was I started to change. Whereas before, I would be extremely uh, careful with with how levels of Christianese and levels of even even spiritual language. Even though people are very open to clairvoyancy and all those things, I was very careful and selective with what I spoke about and how I spoke about it. Uh, but then, over the time, it started to gradually shift, and I was able to speak very very clearly about the angelic. I was able to say talk to them about uh, family members that had passed, that believed in Christ, that were in the cloud of witnesses, and they started to really activate, you know, and so then they, so what happened was that, as I said, I started to really, not just shepherd them in the supernatural, but just started to love and shepherd these people, and I believe that it was one of the, it's one of the tools that God wants to use to actually, to actually bring non-believers into, not just into the world of believers so that they can preach the gospel, but actually so that believers can, can shepherd and can pastor people in times of trouble. And actually it's one of the ways that God protects people. It's very, very interesting. Um, anyway, so I know you probably wanted to talk about the, maybe the, or maybe you wanted to talk about why would God, why does God prosper people? And then, you know, why, what is the deal? What is his plan for a non-believer's business if they're sewing it into something else? But no, I think that's really cool. I see, I see things a little differently because of the way the Lord has talked to me about the way a kingdom business looks and, and, and its purpose. And I, I, I think that what you're saying is absolutely right. I also think an, another reason why God would want to prosper a non, non-believer's business as long as they're directing, he's directing the stat, their st- uh, steps and they're doing what he said. I think there's two parts, at least, I don't know everything, but I know there's at least two agendas that the kingdom of God has for business. 
And one is obviously the, okay, you make money and you use that money to tie their offer into the church or into ministry works and you give to missions and things that the um, community needs. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. But I think the greater use of a kingdom business or business that is being directed from the kingdom of heaven is that all of its business functions, mm -hmm. God now has a say in how they're being directed and the business functions and actually how they're operating, the more righteous they are, the more they align with the book and the scroll, the, yeah. they, they actually have a capability of having a massive impact on society in ways that people don't mm -hmm. see. It's almost the invisible activity. So what you gave mm -hmm. was a great example of how you're kind of being an invisible pastor. Um, another example is if you have an employment issue and how you actually treat your employees or the, the environment around your employees, that mm -hmm. just doesn't affect your company. That affects their lives that affects mm -hmm. their family's lives because if it's a yeah. disgruntled environment it's a toxic environment if people are being underpaid that's actually spreading over to the community if there's a supplier issue and how you're actually getting procuring your products and you're getting it from an, um, a place of ill repute right god could be actually trying to bring correction on that so there's so mm -hmm. many biz there's so many ways and I, I think tentacles that businesses actually spread out and affect the community around them that even if you have an unrighteous person who's running it or quote unquote profiting from it the business activity that's actually being generated if that is kind of coming underneath the jurisdiction of heaven or it's being yeah. made righteous it's being made more fair there's there's more love in it there's more peace there's more um, generosity the fruits of the spirits mm -hmm. are being born in the business because he's doing it the right way and he's doing it the right mm -hmm. way not because he loves god and because he's devoted he's doing it the right way because it makes more money for him at the end of mm -hmm. the day god understands that there's a utility component of this yeah. right yeah. and so i think that it's way more complicated than god only prospers the uh mm -hmm. the just i think there's something to the wicked being in a position in a seat to yeah. make the mm -hmm. just life better or worse and yeah, that's good. he wants to speak into that sorry he wants to speak into that situation in order to make that happen and so yeah um, yeah i don't know if you had anything to say about that but that makes perfect sense to me yeah yeah no and i i I, to I totally agree with that and i think that one of the things that and this is what i was saying and and as you just quoted as well with regards to kind of being an invisible pastor is what you're doing is you're actually helping direct people's thought thought life mm -hmm. because as soon as they're because i think one of the things that that God, well, not one of the things, but I guess one of the primary ways that God leads people is he leads them in their thought life. I mean, he he changes the way that they think. And I think that, that as as you come alongside someone as a prophetic business coach or whatever, if they're a non-believer, you're actually, you're actually helping bring transformation into their thinking. And I think that, as you say, the fruits of the spirit start to come. And I don't think it's that, and I know you, you don't think this, but I don't think it's about someone giving someone some advice and then they take the advice and then they suddenly you know they it's against everything that they agree with but they know it's probably the right thing to do i don't think it's like that i think that god actually transforms the way that people think mm -hmm. so i think that they start to think in a more godly way and they start to make decisions in a more righteous fashion and what happens is what they did six months ago they start to look at their business and i've, I've seen this so many times and and they look and go you know, and they'll make decisions, say, you know what? And they'll say to me, Daryl, six months ago, I wouldn't have made this decision, you know? And I'm like, I know. And, you know, and you can start to actually see them change. And sometimes I'll sit with them, I go, you've really changed, you know? And so what's happening is they're taking on attributes of the kingdom. They're taking on, and they're starting to administrate things of the kingdom and they don't know. And I love what you said about prospering. You know, there might be one year that they got no, you know that they, they, they didn't give their 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 employees or their employee family employees families bonuses or or they didn't have any kind of structure for good medical or you know and suddenly they start to make decisions that include dental and include and they start to prosper people even non-believers prospering non-believers yeah. and they're prospering people and people are actually starting to do better and that is the kingdom the kingdom yeah. of God being forcefully advanced is is heaven on on earth it is had good health joy as you say peace um uh, transfer and, and all of that stuff has a knock-on effect you know people do better financially or they've or they're they're better looked after or they have better working conditions they have less stuff they have less stress in their life they probably drink less they probably less ha they have less episodes less mental illness less depression all of those things come 
by way of people being prospered in a kingdom way, you know, and, and people spend most of their, uh, most of their waking life at work. <laughs> I mean, it is, they spend hours, people spend hours working. So their work environment is just so, so important. So I totally agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I think the kingdom of God was always meant to um, benefit and be an overlay over the just and the unjust, right? It's yeah. supposed to benefit yeah. the believer and the unbeliever. So that's really good. So I just want to ask this, just take a really quick um, <coughs> segue to this, because this is all about execution and utility. So I have a few questions that get us there. The first one is, if somebody's listening um, to this and they say, you know, I know I have a prophetic call in my life. And I know that God, I have a passion for business, and I know that God is actually calling me into being a prophet in the marketplace yeah. in doing something like what you're doing, Daryl. Mm -hmm. What does that journey look like? What would you advise to a person who feels the call to do something very similar? Yeah, well, okay, okay. So this is really, really, really easy. I think that the first thing is this, the prophet, a prophet is a prophet, and you might have a particular mission in being a prophetic person so you might be uh, so when I, when I got called you know God said I'm going to make you a prophet to the business world and government but that doesn't mean in any way that I'm not a prophet in other places too mm -hmm. so what happens is that we have to understand that when God gives you a prophetic calling it's get you know it, uh, Moses says you know I wish all God's people were prophets I wish all they will prophesy all talks you know you can all prophesy one by one so the reality is that and this is really important. I think, first of all, people, if they first of all, we need to understand that as the people of God, we are a prophetic people. We, that's who we are. We're prophetic people. We're people that hear the voice of the Lord. And we are called to prophesy because it says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy because it actually builds people up and the edification of people is what God is looking for. And so, so I think that first of all, when we partner with heaven, when we partner with God, when we partner with the Holy Spirit, in being a prophetic person we have to understand that the modality is not going to be specifically one place it's not going to be just a prophet to the marketplace but i love the fact that you said it like that because a lot of people do speak like that they said god is calling me to be a this and it's yes it's this but it's also who you are mm -hmm. so so this is the, the the interesting thing i heard um there's somebody called cindy jacobs and i heard someone quote her and she said prophets prophesy prophets prophesy and so your question was, you know, if people are feeling called to, to be a prophet to the marketplace, how do they, how do they go about that? Prophesy. One of the things that you need to do is you need to get good at prophecy. You need to get good at not just hearing the voice of the Lord, but you need to be well versed in what it is to prophesy to someone. So my first piece of advice is just prophesy. Well, I don't know. Well, who do I prophesy over? Everybody. Prophesy over everybody. Yeah. I used to be in a place every week where I would just go to church and I would prophesy over as many people as I could. And what happened is, and even now when I go to a big, I mean, this is a, a, a secret now of the trade, but even when I go into, if I go into a very, very big meeting and I'm going to meet maybe potentially a billionaire, maybe someone very high level in government, I spend that week, what do, I don't spend my time or my whole week studying even deeper into the word about being a prophet to the business world. I spend my week prophesying. Mm. So I'll just find some people online, I'll go to church and I will spend more time prophesying than not because what i'm doing is i want to really sharpen up my gift so when i get there i'm able to really spit i really hit the mark every time and so i think that the thing with prophecy and the thing with a lot of this stuff is that you can actually really the more you practice the better you get mm -hmm. so if people are thinking about thinking about being a prophet to the marketplace uh, and i know this is a christian uh you know business podcast but the reality is that that I believe that more and more people are being called up into this modality of working now where they're actually being called to prophesy in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I think that the number one thing is more than anything is not necessarily looking to where you're being called to prophesy, but looking at yourself and your ability to prophesy. Mm, because it good. says that show me a man skilled in his ways and I'll show you a man that stands before kings and not obscure men in the book of Proverbs. So the re reality is you've got to be skilled in your way. And the way that you get good, or let's just say this, the way that God opens doors in the things of the business world and the market, sorry, the, the, the marketplace is the way that he's done it with me is that through the accuracy of my prophecy. So he's never done it because I'm a nice guy, because I'm really good looking, because I've got a, a funny accent. No, he doesn't do any of that. He does it through accuracy of prophecy. 
So what happens is you start to get a reputation, show me a man skilled in his ways. So, so I've been in business meetings before and I've prophesied the next, next three nations for a business and it's opened up the next day. Well, what, what is that? That's mm -hmm. accuracy. And what do they remember? They remember, hey, this guy said this and this is what happened. That's the accuracy and that opens the doors. In fact, nothing I've ever done has come apart from maybe two things of the, more, the biggest stuff that I do have come by people just giving me an invitation, but it's always come by invitation because they've heard that I'm accurate in, in what I do. Because who wants to be, there's no point in you being a nice person in the marketplace. You can be a prophet to the marketplace. If you're a nice person, you have a nice suit, you go and stand there, you're well presented, good looking, everyone wants to spend time with you. What are you giving? What are you adding? You're not adding anything. Just you being a nice person isn't enough. You've actually got to be, you've got to be attuned to the word of the Lord for that person or that business or whatever. And you've got to really carry the blueprint, as it were, of the business that God gives you or for the business. And you've actually got to be able to administrate that successfully in a short amount of time. And that takes practice. And the way that I practice that is I take prophetic words and I do very, very short, sharp prophetic words. And that's how I practice. So I take a lot of information. I say, God, give me a word for this person. I get a lot of information and I literally, I will prophesy this information over this person in two minutes. Mm -hmm. I take all the information and that, that's me being skilled in my way because I know that when I speak, speak with, and, and um, you know, that a lot of the time I do speak with people, my clientele now is a lot more um, influential than it was many years ago. And so I know I don't have a lot of time with people. You know, I think people think that they get in and they get like, a, you know, they can, I'm going to be a prophet of business world. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be doing, you know, two or three hours. And maybe you will, maybe you become a prophetic business coach and you take companies through things and, you know, there's nothing, maybe that's what you'll end up doing. But really when you start prophesying the market, people don't have time. You get 10, I, I would probably get on average, on average pro prophecy time, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. I would say that would be my average. Yeah. So that's not a very long time. Yeah. you know to get out all that i need to get out and and give them the word of the lord and really allow that word of the lord to penetrate i've actually got some really good stuff actually i want to, want to say something else um i think i think what some of the time what we're looking for is you're look we're looking for we're looking to be prospered this is really important we're talking about profits in the marketplace now if people feel called to be a prophetic person in the marketplace or prophesy in the marketplace a lot of the time they'll prophesy over someone and then they'll go, oh, wow, I got to do this. So that now is on my portfolio, as it were. And now I'm moving into, I'm, I'm, hopefully that will open up something else or maybe I'll have to open up, you know, or when do I get repeat business with this person? Or, and it doesn't work like that. And as soon as you slip into that mentality, you've missed it. Because the thing is that God will give you, you are a messenger of what God is saying. Mm. So if you're being a messenger into the marketplace and say you've got to go, say, say, your assignment is to work with, I used to work with a person that ran um, swimming schools, like big swimming schools. And so say I go there and I'll go, well, it's really good that I'm doing a swimming school, but really I want to be prophesying over banks. Why? Because banks are more influent. But, but if that's the assignment that God's got you on, that's the assignment God's got you on. Yeah. And I think that we think that it's better. No, it's better when I get this, but you have no idea what these swim schools are going to do. You've got no idea how they're going to impact the children and have four, five, six hundred children every week in a swim school, and you're helping direct the person that's managing all those young people as in conjunction with you prophesying over it. And so what happens is that we, we, we sometimes so quickly want to move on to the next thing or look for the bigger and the badder. And, you know, I'll only be happy when I prophesy over the president. I'll only be happy when I prophesy over Bill Gates. I'll only be happy when I... And that's just not real. That's not how it works. See, God has... He'll give you an assignment because he knows which businesses he wants to prosper. He knows what he wants to do and he knows what your wiring is and what you're able to do. So if you're, you have to stay as much as possible, just stay in your lane, prophesy, get release the things that he's asked you to release over the particular businesses that, that he's allowing you to speak into. And then as, as you start to steward, you know, you start to steward those things, he does increase and he does give more. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but I do feel like people, First of all, they, their eyes are bigger than their capacity. Well, let's just say this. They think that their stomach's bigger than, the, than their eye, you know, uh, smaller than the, their eyes. So basically they're going, I want to do this. And I've been in situations before, Christian, where 
people say, oh yeah, I'm going to be a prophecy to, I'm going to prophesy to some of the biggest people in the world. Well, I can tell you this, I used to say that. And then when I got into positions where I would meet with multi-billionaires, I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. the, the frequency that some of these people carried, I felt so out of my depth. And I'm a, I'm a good prophesier. So I've been doing this for a long, um, this isn't like, I've been doing this for a long time, paid and unpaid. So for me, I, I just felt like people like, sometimes they think that they get, you know, that this thing, they'll move into this and they'll do it so well, but they don't understand that the weight and the, the capacity you need to be able to stand before kings, it, it looks so different. It looks so different it, because people, the frequency is so different, stature is so different, and these people have to come alongside, you know, and it, and it, and it, it takes way more than you think. So, so I just, anyway, so it's good to do, to allow God to take you on the journey. Start here, start small, start with the swim school, start with this, steward those things well. Don't look for the next thing. And then when you're at the right time, God will then prosper you and bring you into the, bring you into places of more influence. That's really good. So we're going to move on in one second. I just have one other question that's along the same lines. What is your wisdom around prophesying to companies that whose products you don't endorse, you think are harmful to society, are not good, um, mm -hmm. controversial, you know, mm -hmm. um, that you have a moral um, aversion yeah. to. What, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on something like that? Since we're gonna really just, you know, yeah. go out there and make people feel uncomfortable. What, what are your thoughts about some of that stuff? Yeah, I just think, I think you need the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, you need the word of the Lord. I was asked once to prophesy over a person who was in a very, very nasty industry. And I don't just disagree with this industry. This industry is something that I'm fighting against. And, but I knew that God's hand was on this person. Mm. And I knew that God wanted me to prophesy over that particular person. And I think that the bottom line is this. I think the, the, the bottom line, I think there are two, two components. I think the first one is conviction. You have to allow your internal value system and your conviction. You have to allow it to dictate some of your world because otherwise you've got nothing to stand for. Okay. So if you're in a place where, because, because if you don't, if you don't have a core value system that, you, of what you believe in, then you're not doing it. Then really we're not moving forward in anything. So the reason I do what I do is because I have a conviction of the kingdom and I have a conviction of something and that core value system in itself dictates what I will do and what I will not do. But, um, but in everything that's presented to me, I will always seek the word of the Lord. And what I found over the time, and this is funny, is I found that God has been far more lenient than I would have been on occasions on who I should prophesy over and which products I should be helping produce. Mm -hmm. And I felt the Lord say that when you speak, you actually start to purify the sector. Mm -hmm. And so I started to realize that as I speak, I pure, when I carry the word of the Lord, I actually bring a purification to a sector. Now I'm not talking about prophesying into the porn industry and purifying the sector because you're, but I will say this, I will say, that God is probably far more lenient than people think he is. And I think sometimes, even as Christians, we have levels of conviction and even some of our core values that are not that don't actually work because they're set up religiously mm -hmm. and they're set up in a place where God does, this is good, this is bad. But God says, no, 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 no. Don't look at good and bad. Look at what I'm asking you to do. And there's a big difference because you've got to remember that Jesus spent his time with, with sinners and tax collectors. Mm -hmm. This is really important. People had in the in the word in the Bible, people were not hanging out with believers all the time. That it just was not happening. Daniel was in the middle of, I mean, he was working with the highest level astrologers. I mean, really, they were they were they were the occult. So he spent his whole time, or not his whole time, but he, I, I know he had a number of believers with him. But really, he was spending his time interacting with people that were engaging in the occult in the occult every day because he was leading them. So I think that, and I know we know that, but I just think like there, so I think with regards to products and, and all these things, you've just got to be spirit led to yourself, be spirit led to yourself and just ask the Lord, God is this, what do you want me to do with this? And he will surprise you. He will surprise you when he goes, no, I want you. No, 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 you can prophesy over that one. You know, but this is causing so much damage. 
And he goes, yeah, you're going to purify the waters. You know? It's really good. So I don't, no, it's great. It's a more nuanced conversation around this stuff because we've been stuck in what I call black, white thinking in a church. It's just, it's either right, wrong, good, bad. And it locks us out of a lot of um, what I think is going to be the next level. So we don't have a lot more time because I obviously you're really busy and I know you have to get started on your day, but I, I do want to just ask a few more questions. So the first one is around, and this is just for those who are businesses or have companies or entrepreneurs who need prophetic coaching or think they would just two questions talk a little bit about the process that you go through because i know you do prophetic coaching and you mm -hmm. offer that we'll talk a little bit at the end about how to you know get access to that what's the process and just for someone who's going to engage in this method this uh, level of ministry how does yeah. someone take a prophetic word and mm -hmm. go from that prophetic word to landing it what, what are mm -hmm. some um you know, pieces of wisdoms that you, that you have there and how yeah. much of it, how do we balance between doing it in our own strength, in our own timing and in the timing mm -hmm. of the Lord, understanding where the spiritual and the mm -hmm. natural, how do we co-labor to bring that into, into yeah. this world? Yeah. So those are just two questions. Talk about the process and then that, that third, that other piece. Yeah. Okay. So the process, so first of all, the process of, let's do the prophetic word one first. We get a prophetic word. How do we know how to land that? How do we know when God, when God wants to do that? So the, way, the way that I work with prophetic words is this. I take them and I use them. <clears throat> um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to kind of just get, get the right language for it. So this is the, like, I'll just tell you as it is, but if I say this to, your, to the listeners, and you know that I'm just about to go somewhere else, but listen, if I say this to the listeners, this is my world. This is not your world. Okay. I don't believe in the timing of the Lord the way that people believe in the timing of the Lord. Okay. I don't believe in any of that. I, 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 well, I believe in some of it. It says in Ecclesiastes to everything, there is a time and, and, and to every event under heaven. In Ecclesiastes 3, one time and a season for every event under heaven, the word event, there is the word thing. Um, the problem, you know, in Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says God makes everything beautiful or, or appropriate in its time. And so we have something called the timing of the Lord. The problem we've got in the church is that we have stopped co-laboring with the Lord and we just, we change that for waiting on mm, God. And yeah. there's a big problem when you wait on God. So when we get, uh, what's the big problem? You can't say that. Well, you can't because the reality is that most people are waiting for something that God is waiting for them to action. So I believe that a lot of the times when I get a prophetic word, and this is not for listeners to do immediately, but when I get a prophetic word, I start to action it immediately. I've got no, I don't do a, I don't put it on the shelf, wait for the timing of the Lord. My wife's very good at kind of saying, hey, just hold off on that. What I do is I start to wage war with it immediately. I start to say, I just got a word recently about a different nation that, I'm, that God's talking to me about. I said, okay. And so what I do is I really try to meet that. I try to nut it out and try to get some kind of action step off it from the Lord immediately. So I do it straight away. So so I believe that there is a, there is, we're in a different season now. I believe, but also a different modality of working where it's not, we're getting a word, waiting for a word, waiting for God to manifest something because 20 years ago, he said, you're an apostle. That whole mentality is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If you're an apostle, that's, God said, I'm, a, I'm an apostle, but I'm just, waiting, I'm just waiting for him to do something with it. And I'm talking about in the context, I'm like, what on, if you're an apostle, that's who you are before you were born. So the manifestation of that is going, Go and, do and, go and do something. And I think that if people don't have the drive to do it, I think that probably there's two things. Either they're locked up in an old modality of working and they've come under some kind of religious thing or they were never called to do it and the word was wrong. Mm. Because the bottom line is that when we catch a word that is from the Lord, it activates something in us and it's only an old mindset that would stop us from moving forward into that. I'll give you an example. I can prophesy over someone else. I really believe that God's going to give you songs um, and you're going to play the piano. And they can go, oh, you know, well, I'm, I'm waiting for the right time. Well, you don't need to wait for the right time. <laughs> Just go and get a piano lesson. And I'm not being rude, but, but what we do is we get into that place of being so weird and religious about the timing of the Lord. I'm waiting for that. I hear people talk about the timing of God on prophetic words. Blow your mind, Christian stuff that you just think what on earth like you know really silly small things mm -hmm. that and people will just wait and say oh you know we'll just see how god what god does with that and i'm like i look at them and i'll go you will never move into that never 
because you're not there's no action in you you're not actually you know in the faith with the at works is dead there needs to be something of you actioning something so in the prophetic people are talking you, your question was you know how do you, you get a prophetic word so what i do is i get a prophetic word and i chew on it i steward it and then i start to to make steps towards something and as i to start to make steps towards it if i feel very strongly that it's that i'm out of sync with heaven i'm out of sync i'm out of touch then i just i actually pull back a little bit and then i focus on some of the other prophetic words that i've been focusing on mm -hmm. so so That's and then i wait again and then a week later maybe two weeks later three weeks later i might go and have a have another look at that word again and then start to push towards it again if I don't feel it's the right time, um, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll come back and I'll, I'll wait on it for another couple of weeks. But if I don't feel any caution, I just run with it. That's so good. If I don't feel any, if I don't feel any caution or, or if I don't feel any um, hesitancy in my spirit, then I'll just run with it. Because I think that we're in a place, I spoke about this on Dan's podcast, I think we're in a place where it's like the blended lenses. I just think like we can pull in what we were supposed I'm doing stuff now. As I said to you before, it's reserved for when I'm 50. I'm 40 now. I'm definitely doing stuff that was on my scroll to do in 10 years. And I'm doing it now. I do it every day. Mm. And I, it's because I just don't, I don't feel like we've got time. We've got to get stuff done. The world's collapsing. We've got to, we've got to, you know, we've got to partner with God to get stuff done. So anyway. This, that's really, this is really good. Um, I totally agree. And that's kind of why I asked the question. It was a little bit of a trigger, a trigger treat. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> You know, guys, when this podcast is a result of the last, um, was that in January or December when you did yep. your last podcast January. with Daniel? That was yeah. in January, okay? It was maybe the, the first week of January, something like that, right over the new year. And, and mm -hmm. Dan had Daryl on to talk about what um, he, was, he had seen for 2020. And I just pop in this office, this exact office, obviously this is the studio. And I just say, hey, Daryl, you know, we're just chatting. And he said, I feel like God will give you a podcast. I feel like God will give you a podcast if you really want one. And, and I just said, oh, okay, cool. And, and I didn't, as he said, I didn't fill a check on it. With, within like two days, I already had booked like three guests, right? Yep. Now, if you know me, I have no interest in being on a podcast. I have no interest in having my face out in public. My Facebook is just completely non-existent. I don't like social media. This really isn't my thing. So the caution is on my own comfort level of being behind the scenes and not talking. Yeah. I hate my voice. Yeah. I don't want to be on a podcast. It's not interesting to me at all. But I knew that there was something on this because it was in, it, it was very consistent with how God was trying to push what, what I had forward, right? And, and my yeah. resisting. And so instead of just oh gosh, you know, God, I'm just going to let simmer and let that brew. I just, I just did it, you know, to the point where we <laughs> scheduled Daniel and we didn't even have a name. So he just said, oh, Christian business. Oh, I guess, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, just do it, you know? And I think there's something about people waiting for the next thing. The, there's a lot of waiting because they don't feel like they have enough. You'll never have enough when you start. You'll never be fully prepared. And, mm -hmm. um, God will never give you the whole thing. And yeah. if he's given you something and you haven't done that, do not ask him for something else until you've done it. And if you ask me or you ask Daryl or you ask Dan, our anointing combined cannot override your disobedience. Mm -hmm. So um, sounds pretty harsh, but there's something about just being a good steward of what he's given you in order yeah. to be um, in a position to receive more. So I think mm -hmm. that's awesome. Just do it. And if you don't know how, learn. Get, get people around you that can help you read a book, do whatever you can, but don't sit and incubate things for 20 and 30 years and yeah. thinking that there's some timing of God that's going to magically spontaneously appear where your, your mm. business is going to show up, the new business line, the new product. You just have to get it done and do it. So mm -hmm. thank you, Daryl. That was, that, that was awesome. Okay. That's good. That's good. So anything else there? Are you good? I know that was probably a trigger for you. <laughs> no, I'm triggered now. I'm triggered just from that. <laughs> no, I think it's good. I think it's good. I, look, I love being on the show. And I think that one of the things or the podcast, and I think one of the things that people need to understand, they, they've heard me a couple of times, is when we're talking and you re-listen to this again, we're, at, uh, we're actually shifting something. So when we, even with stories, even with, with history, it's not just speaking into something, it's actually bringing a transformational shift. 
So what we're doing is we're actually setting something up. And I really believe that part of my calling is to set people up into walking in more of the fullness of their destiny. And I don't just believe that. I know that that's my call. So what happens is that I help people that are in one place and help them move into the new things that God has for them. And part of that is getting them broken out of their funk, as it were, you know. And so, and I think that that's one, what, if we could talk about, if, if anything is the underlying theme of what we're talking about today with Christian business is working out how to deliver, get delivered from funk in order that you can then be released into the fullness of the things that you, that you, that God has for you. And, 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 and nearly all of it is the process of the transition of thinking so that you can start to see things differently, understand that when God does speak, he has every intentionality for us to move into things. Uh, you know, and, and Graham Cook says everything in God is a go unless it's a no. And so I love that. And if I and I feel like that's probably one of the reasons I've been able to walk into multinational business, multinational businesses, bring them with the word of the Lord, work with governments, prophesy in the marketplace, really take hold of that calling that God gave me before I was born. But, but you know, one of the reasons is because I, I'm not one that waits around. I just go and have a look. And if it doesn't work, I'm not disobedient. I don't push into something that God isn't allowing me to do. But I'm always active and I'm always ready to move forward. And I feel like for, for your listeners and for people, listen, yeah, so people listening, I really feel like this is a time right now not to sit and wait, but this is a time to go. This is a time for to be active, to go, to when the word comes, to run with that word. If anything, be encouraged that God isn't going to let you fall, you know, and even if you don't get it exactly right, he's still going to back you. Yeah. And I think that that's so important. I think that when we understand that, if he's going to prosper a non-believer's business, how much more, you know, how much more is he going to be walking alongside one of his children, you know, his sons and daughters in order to help prosper them, uh, that they would be able to change the world. Because every person here listening to this, if you feel activated or you feel uh, an affinity for to what we're talking about, it's because you're designed to change the world. You're so designed good. to change the nations. And that's, that's what so we're doing. Good. That's so good. Yeah, I think I just, just feel re, re, um, uh, pushing to say a couple of things. One is I think part of the thing about being Christian and, and, and being in this is that we're always afraid of doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. kind of released, want to release over people you mm -hmm. have the freedom to break things. Mm -hmm. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. That's not how this whole thing works. And the second yeah. thing is, um, I think people often, you know, I think there's a huge fear of being out there because it, you can be judged when you go off and you do something. If you're, if you're, you know, meant to be in the meant to be in business, everything, every area of your life is now open to a, a set of exposure that it, it's not before. And I'm going to tell you, there's cheap, there are cheap seats. The cheap seats are the folks who are sitting on the side and they can yep. tell you why you did it wrong and why you should be doing mm -hmm. it differently and how it should be done if you were going to do it. And then there are people who are in the arena actually doing this stuff. And that requires what Daryl does, what Dan does, what I do. This is actually one, one of the reasons why I'm like, I never want Dan's job is because it requires vulnerability. And yeah, if you well, have an yeah. issue with moving, it's because you probably have an issue with vulnerability. Because vulnerability is the ability to be seen and to be okay with being seen and all the implications that come along with that, just being seen and being heard and having an opinion that people like, people don't like, but they're hearing it. And so I just want to encourage you that this podcast is, there's some things that you have been sitting on, haven't been moving on. It may or may not have to be about business or the prophetic or ministry. There's something there. We just want to encourage you to move through break through the um, tendency to be invulnerable and um, just ask God to deal with those hard issues and just have permission to be a little messy. Life's a little messy. As you say, we're not going to get everything perfect. We're not going to get everything right, but there's a freedom in moving. There really is. Yeah, exa exactly. And God will back you. God will back you. God will back you. And he'll clean it up too. He'll help you clean it up. Exactly. He will clean it up. <laughs> Can I just give a couple of just a, a couple of what we were talking about? We was talking about supernatural things just for just for two minutes. Is that okay that I just tell you a couple of things that I was seeing? So I just um, in the spirit, um, I felt the Holy Spirit talk to me about a few people, and so they're going to be watching this, and I just want to I just want to kind of encourage them. The first one was 
I felt the, uh, that someone was doing a computer science degree. Now, I don't know a lot about computer science, but I really felt like they were, had been focusing on things to do with apps and app design, but they were studying computer science. So I really believe it's a, a, a guy that listens to the podcast. And I really um, wanted to encourage that person that I felt the Lord say that the direction to do with the apps um, is he wants to tweak that direction and he wants it's going to things are going to look a bit different and i really felt like it was going to be more towards working with um online operating systems and rather than phone apps and so this is a very specific word and i know that you're going to get an email from him no doubt but it's important and it actually really encourages people when we release those 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 words of knowledge the second one was i saw someone wanting to start an acting school uh, to actually start a school in itself for young actors uh, or for, for people that wanted to move into acting. And and I um, really resonate with that. And I really believe that the Lord is saying now is the time to start that acting school. I believe that you probably live in the Midwest somewhere, but I really believe that that's been on your heart for a long time. And the Lord is saying now is the time to go. You can uh, just be able to, and I really believe that as you start to, in a place of faith, appropriate that, things are going to start to fall into place. I also saw someone else um, wanted to start um, floristry and that there was something about i know these businesses are so they're not like they don't look like they don't sound like people, but it doesn't matter a business is a business and i felt the lord say and i actually prophesied this over someone uh, a while ago but i really felt the lord say that when you when you create when you're creative in floristry you actually bring healing to people and i believe that the different bouquets are actually going to bring healing to mental illness, marriages, and all of this, because they're actually going to carry a frequency of heaven that releases healing. And so I really felt like someone wanted to have a floristry shop. And I know that sounds, and again, it's like something small, but it's not. If it's your divine mandate in God, it's your divine mandate in God. And that is, is the way it is, and, and, and it's so important. So I just felt for those three specifically, I just felt like I need to just release those words. So. That's amazing. That's so cool. I, um, I can't wait to hear the testimonies and the people who write in to say that was me. So we're going to wrap up, but I just, I want you to just uh, do uh, one more thing before we give you more information about how to get a hold of Daryl. Can you just tell us what you're seeing? I don't want to put you on the spot, but anything on a macro level, uh, just uh, speaking prophetically about this decade as it relates yep. to businesses, as it relates to kingdom business and yep. what God wants to do. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's, it's one word, build and prosper. That's, that's what he wants to do. He wants to build people and he wants to prosper them. I believe that he I believe that he is enlarging our capacity to dream. He said to me before, dream big and now dream bigger. The reason being is because I believe that he wants one man with God, one woman with God is a majority. And one of the things that he wants us to understand is that he wants to prosper us beyond anything that we could possibly imagine. And I believe that he wants to give us tools in order to do that. And I don't think that it's going to be, and I uh, appreciate the concepts of working and it's important to work hard and get those things done. But I believe that it, the amount of work that we will end up doing for the amount of uh, influence and uh, I just want to say it like this, the amount of money we end up getting is going to be, it's going to be on incongruent with the world. I believe that God is going to give us systems um, and not just systems. He's going to give us uh, ways of working and ways of functioning and blueprints from heaven that are actually designed to prosper us in ways that we couldn't have possibly imagined in order that literally we are able to steward. I mean, for some people, I believe that you're going to move from, this is a very strong word, but I believe that you'll move from tens of thousands to millions. You'll nearly jump. It will jump so crazy because of the systems that God puts in place. And I believe that you're going to actually miss the hundreds of thousands. It's actually going to jump from tens to millions. And that's what I feel like Lord, the Lord is saying. I feel like there's a, there's a scripture that says, you stoop down to make me great or your, uh, or your gentleness has made me great. And I just feel like the Lord is saying, I, I'm going to prosper my people in a way that they couldn't have possibly imagined. But that's, and that's what we, he wants us to believe him for. He wants us to believe him that he, he is going to prosper us so much because there's so much to do. And when you were saying about the macro thing over the next decade, I believe that God is calling people to give really not just not just big business people uh just you know 10 business people give this amount of money into the kingdom i believe that multiple people um in the body of christ are being called up to 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 partner with an entrepreneurial spirit so i believe that multiple people will, will could be called business people just in the body brian simmons who wrote the passion translation bible when i spoke to him he said that he, he believed that the biggest translate the biggest sorry translation the biggest transition in the body of Christ in this next era would be that people move from cap salary 
to multiple revenue streams. And I believe that that is where we are. I believe that God wants us to understand that. And I don't believe that the money just comes from one revenue stream, it's multiple revenue streams implementing blueprints from heaven. And then when we implement those blueprints, and I just keep getting the word systems, heavenly systems for our businesses, and we implement those really in line with the way, the, the way that the Lord says, that those businesses will prosper in ways that we couldn't have possibly imagined they would prosper. I just want to share one story because I just think this is so important. It's a very short story. Um, there was one woman once, and I, I, I got permission to share this story, and she was hanging out with a person called Patricia King, and she had a dream, and in her dream, the Lord spoke to her and said, I want you to buy meat. I want you to buy meat, as in steak. And this woman was a very, very uh, well-to-do, very, you know, very good-looking pristine beautiful nails and the lord spoke to her actually came into her room and said i want you to buy meat so the next day she was like that's a very strange strange word you know she had been i think she had been in real estate and suddenly she got this real stirring that she needed to have a look for meat and then the lord said to her she was looking through the newspaper and he said to her um and i met her and he said um i want you to buy a meat van hmm. and she was like a meat van why would you want me to buy a meat van but she was doing uh, you know, uh, uh, a timeshare and property and on the beach and really clean and nice car. And, you know, and he said, I want you to buy a meat van. And what happened was, to, long story short, she, she said yes. She ended up buying a meat van. And when she bought the meat van, she said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to fill it with meat and go to the market. And he said, why would I want this? She's this ridiculous. <laughs> so apparently she ended up going to this place getting some getting lots of this meat filling the meat van with meat and then going to her local market which is so far beyond but this is so going to going to speak to people and what happened was that she went to the meat market and she said oh, sorry the market to sell meat and the guy who ran the market said oh, i can't believe you've done this we have just lost our meat distributor and and so good that you've done this thank you so much and she said that she had her hands on the meat and she actually had to actually sell the meat and she's like why am i doing this and what happened was that after a couple of weeks she did that for a couple of weeks in obedience to the lord and yeah she made some money because they made some what happened was that they she realized that what happened was that the main meat distributor in the whole region had uh, put down their business so what happened was every regional market contacted her and asked her to become the primary distributor for the meat in that area and she became so rich so what she did wow. was she was able to get one van two vans three vans four vans and those vans then stopped the best steak and went out and redistributed in the markets and that became an extremely lucrative business for her and she didn't touch the meat anymore she obviously employed <laughs> someone else to do it but it was just such a great story and i asked if i could share it and she said yeah that was fine because it's just such a great story of us getting a system or first of all just being obedient to the word of the lord and did she ever want to be a me i really don't think so is she happy that she is now because she's just done so well of course god said that there's an opening and i want you to take this opening and he yeah. prospered her i think it was 12 months one year and the whole thing exploded and i just want to encourage you listeners today that that is what god is doing over this next time he's going to give people random seemingly insignificant things buy a meat van buy a bouncy castle buy a you know and it's because he knows what niches there what openings there are and he wants to prosper people like crazy and she went i'm i presume i didn't know all the figures but i think she went from you know a couple of thousand a week to and i would say she's in the more than more than hundreds of thousands as a result of just stepping just stepping just stepping out i don't want to be so specific but i just she did extremely well because she became then the primary distributor for the whole region. So that's amazing. It's so funny. Um, I have a story very similar to that, but I don't want to make the podcast too long, but I'll just say with one of the businesses that we have, um, the Lord made it very clear that we were supposed to go into farmer's markets and that's our, my Saturday and Sunday. So Daniel and I, Daniel is fighting demons five days a week. And then we're yeah. literally on Saturday and Sunday um, saying, do you want to sell, do you want to try some of our nuts? I mean, literally for eight hours a day. And do you know the first time we did that, the first weekend, two people came up to us for wholesale deals, one in very luxury high-end um, high opera houses yeah. and things like that, because it's kind of a high, high, uh, higher niche product. 
and the other one in just place they want to open up. And so yeah. that was just one week. And when the first week yeah. when we got back from, from Australia. So now we're the second yeah. week. Wow. Now. I mean, it's just, and it's, you know, I'm thinking me, you know, exactly. You would think me with all of my degrees, why am I sitting here selling nuts, you know, but there's something to what God is doing. There's a wisdom there. And yeah. in that strategy, when we uh, got that from our, our script and our scroll from heaven, uh, farmer's markets that were really, really difficult. Some of the top ones to get into in the country, really, really difficult ones. We got in, in like a week, in a day, in a few days. I mean, something that would take us a couple months all the time got expedited because we were just obedient to follow yeah. the strategy and there's a grace yeah. on what you follow and it may not look glamorous right that's mm -hmm. the thing people are looking for the stage and all the great stuff but mm -hmm. we're on the concrete we're outside or we're yeah. jet lag <laughs> it's cold it's rainy but we're yeah. solid nuts not because yeah. it's the cool thing to do but because god is on it and so yes. that's another yeah. thing like you said, you're touching meat, you're selling. I mean, it's not my thing, you know, like yeah. I'm more of an office person, but I'm on what God is doing. Right. Yes, and that's exactly. just the encouragement. Um, just follow his direction, be obedient, no matter where it, it uh, takes you be vulnerable yeah. enough to break things and, and fail. It's okay. Yeah. To do. And, um, God is there. He's there right with you. So I think this is going to yeah. be really encouraging. So Daryl, yeah. there's, there's ways that people can get a hold of you now. That's super yeah. cool and amazing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know, are you still running your prophetic school? Can you talk a little bit about that for folks who are? Yeah, so I, I, have, I, I actually put that on, I put that on hold until May because we're running a lot of stuff in the church I work in. So I'll be running a prophetic intensive in May again, which is in two months. Okay. Uh, but, but in conjunction with that, I now offer prophetic sessions on my website. People can book in a session with me for an hour. And I basically do a little bit of prophetic consulting with them, uh, primarily uh, for people that feel like they're in transition or feel like they're waiting for the next thing in God. And I, uh, and I really kind of specialize in, in helping people line up to what God is speaking in each season. And so if people, uh, people are very free to come in and, and book an hour with me, it's on my website. It's a small charge and it's, it, it's, it's well worth it. So they can do that by going to DarylCrawfordMinistries.com. So. got that daryl crawford ministries.com it'll be at the bottom in the description of the podcast wherever you find it and um for your may your prophetic intensive in may how do people sign up or express interest in that so a lot of people have already expressed interest from uh, who are on dan's podcast as well but basically if they just if they if they just messenger me at this stage and then i've just got a list of people that i will then contact when i when i do the intensive and they'll be able to jump on and do it with us so it's a 40-day six-week prophetic intensive that's designed specifically to again line people up to what they're called to do but more than that it's actually designed to activate people and teach them how to administrate a prophetic platform where they are so it's really really powerful Okay, so they can do that on Facebook Messenger and then mm -hmm. Daryl Crawford Ministries.com to uh, mm -hmm. book a prophetic session with you. And I yeah. can tell you right now, Daryl is excessively accurate, um, mm -hmm. excessively accurate when it comes to uh, prophecy. When we were just in Australia, um, for before we got to Adelaide, we were in Bendigo, and Daniel and I were like, we really need some vitamin C. When we get to Adelaide, we need to talk to Daryl or Todd and see if they could take us to a drugstore because we had been on eight flights by that point. And, it was just a lot going on. And, and um, then we got there and it's just, oh, hey, hey, we just kind of completely forgot about all of that. And the day before Daryl picked us up, I'm like, I have to get to vitamin C. I'm kind of feeling like I'm coming under the weather, cold, not coronavirus, just a cold or something, vitamin C. So and then you kind of forget. So we get in the car. Uh, Daryl picks us up for our first session in Adelaide, Field of Dreams. And he says, well, the Lord told me to give you something, he told me to give you something, Daniel, and told me to give you something, Christian. And they, he gave me very specific instructions. And I'm like, oh, okay, what is this? And he pulls out a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And he told me to take it with this alkaline water, very specifically. Anybody who knows this knows it's all we drink. So yeah. it, it was just That's awesome. you know, God's so good. the big stuff and the little stuff God yeah. is so concerned with. And I think yeah. that was just another, just another thing to show this guy's like, he nails it every time. So definitely make sure to uh, sign up for a prophetic session. If you have some things that God is trying to do within you or you're trying to hear God on, it's going to be really awesome. Mm -hmm. Carol, thank you so much for spending so some time. It has just been so awesome. I think people are going to get a lot out of this podcast. Yeah, I think so too. Today. And everyone, God bless you. I can't wait to uh, see you next month on the Christian Business Podcast.
You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like our video, and share this with friends. This podcast is a production of Bride Ministries International. Visit our website at brideministriesinternational.com to enjoy the Bride Ministries Church, the Bride Ministries Institute, free resources, and to support us financially.